There are five elements, all bound together by techniques. Footwork, transitions, grounds, and power moves. Under footwork, there are eight components. Each can be used and combined to make a full routine. And underneath that, there are a countless number of more moves. And it's all combined so when it is showtime, you can kill the beat. The first component is going to be edges. I cannot stress this enough, you really really need to practice these, these are super super important. There are two edges per skate, an outside edge and an inside edge, and two directions, forwards and backwards. If you can manage to master all four of these edges with drills like cross rolls and figure of eights, you can learn any footwork move after that. The next component is going to be vines. Vines are often mixed with other components, so let's say a vine into a stop, or a vine into a step. It's flipping from one edge to another, but keeping both of your feet on the ice at all times. This can be done in a stationary or moving form. I know it can be complicated to understand exactly what a vine is, but just think of a vine and how it grows, how it is a constant stream weaving and tying throughout itself. There's a great drill that I love to do where you just keep doing as many moves as you can, as many transitions, switches, everything, but you keep both of your feet planted on the ice at all times and do not remove them. The next one is going to be stops. Now, of course, it's important to learn stops so you can stop your momentum, but in a routine, it is great to use for dynamics, for a quick pause, maybe an aggressive backstab, utilizing both of your inside and your outside edge stops. I also use stops a lot when I'm changing from one move to another to try to maintain flow, do a quick pause, flip from one move into another move. It is also a lot of fun inventing and coming up with new stops. People are coming up with crazy stops all the time. The fourth component is going to be switches. This is a very key component. This is going from forwards to backwards or backwards to forwards. So for example of some drills, this would be like three turns and heel switches and even small hop switches. I use this many times in my sets. It's very, very important to have good control while you do your switches. I like to start a set with it, do a nice three turn straight into the start of my set when I come in. You can use this in conjunction with vines as well, so you can do little vine switches. A great drill I would say to practice this is going to be the stop into a heel switch into a stop the other direction. This will practice both of your stops in both directions as well as your heel switch in both directions. The fifth one is going to be steps. Now I use steps as more of a filler move. The key difference between a step and a stop is the fact that a step is not done on an edge. It's always done flat. Although you can throw in some heels and some toes in your steps, it's more of like a walking motion. For example, like a moonwalk or maybe kicking the heel out to add some flair to your set. So it can be great for musicality because you can do some quick steps or something like that to really hit the beat. Or you could even use it to center your circle. The next component is going to be drags and slides. This is pretty much exactly what it sounds like. Dragging a foot from in front or behind to the sides. It's really great for musicality, you can really slow down a movement. It's great for dynamics. This includes moves like the sweep or even just a simple foot move dragging your foot back into the center. I won't lie, I really need to practice and use these more in my routines. There are always some components that you practice a lot more than others because you enjoy doing them more, but when you have a well-rounded set, you want to use all of the components in conjunction and flow with each other. The seventh and second last component is going to be rotations. So this is super important, this is spins and rotations. Mastering these can take a very long time, but if you can get a really nice spin in your set, it is super impressive and really fun to do. I can give a quick tip here. I use spins a lot. 
when I stumble or trip to quickly catch my balance again. So it's actually really great to practice all of your spins because a lot of times when you mess up on a routine, you can use a spin to save yourself and most people don't even know it was an accident. Also, don't forget to add techniques. So this would be things like toe spins or heel spins. Remember, you can add techniques to every single move on this list. Also included in this component is pins and pivots. So a pin or a pivot is where you stick your foot into the ice and you make a rotation around that foot in the ice. And last but not least are aerials or hops. This is exactly what it sounds like. This is a small hop in your set. So let's say you're doing a vine. You can add some flair by adding a nice little hop into your set. This does not include larger jumps like butterflies or 360s or backflips. These are all under power moves because these are much more of a single power move that you do. Where this is inclusive hops into your routines. And that is it for all eight components, but do not forget about techniques. Techniques can be added to every single one of these components. So this is things like toes, heels, kicking a foot out, trying all of these creative things. And of course, gestures, your entire body is part of this artistic movement. So this was the Global Ice Freestyle Chart for Footwork. The full chart is available on GlobalIceSkate.com, so definitely check that out. Specific move tutorials will be coming out soon. I already have a selection of tutorials available online, so definitely check those out. Have fun, be creative, and I will see you on the ice.